Mr. Harris here and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to talk about litmus solution and paper. But before we begin, let's have a quick recap on the previous topic, natural indicators. So natural indicators, we, we went through some examples, for example, red cabbage and hibiscus. And then we figured out that they had pigments, which could be used as indicators. So let's talk about litmus. So litmus is another indicator that can help us to identify acids and alkalis. So the word litmus, it actually comes from lichen. Lichen is found sometimes on trees over here. So people could extract the lichen and then um, boil it up and then it can basically, you can have litmus out of it. So litmus, it exists in solution form and also in paper form. And you have two types of litmus, blue litmus and red litmus. So as I've told you, the solution form, blue litmus and the solution form for red litmus. Okay, one of them is actually to identify acid while the other is to identify an alkali. So we'll talk about that later. We also have the litmus paper. So how can we get the litmus paper? It's actually very simple. You just get some litmus solution over here and you add it to some paper strip and then you just leave it to dry in open air or you can dry it in an oven and then you will eventually have your litmus paper over here. So in the lab, Hopefully when school resumes, we'll be using both litmus solution and litmus paper. So let's try to compare the colors of the litmus paper when we pour it in, when we dip it in acidic and alkaline solutions. Okay. So first of all, the experiment is going to go like this. You're going to have a spot plate. This is a spot plate. And you're going to place the litmus papers on spot plate. So blue on one side and the red on the other. And then you'll add a few drops of the solutions. So the first solution you're going to add is dilute hydrochloric acid. This is an acid as the name suggests. So you're going to pour it on both the blue litmus paper and the red litmus paper. Afterwards, you're going to observe whether there's any color change on the litmus paper. We're going to repeat the same steps using dilute sodium hydroxide solution. This is an alkali. And also, we're going to use distilled water, which is neutral. So it's neither acidic nor alkaline. So let's see what happens to the color changes. So for dilute hydrochloric acid in blue litmus paper, the color changes from the original color is blue, of course, and it changes to red. How about for dilute sodium hydroxide solution? It remains blue. And for distilled water, it also remains blue. Now let's do for red litmus, litmus paper. Dilute hydrochloric acid, it remains red. In dilute sodium hydroxide solution, the color changes from red to blue. And for distilled water, 
it remains red. Now, from this table, what conclusion can you draw? So the first conclusion you can draw is in dilute hydrochloric acid, the color of the litmus paper, which is blue, it, it changes from blue to red. So in other words, if there is an acid present, the blue litmus paper changes from blue to red. On the other hand, for dilute sodium hydroxide solution, the color changes from red to blue. So if you have an alkali solution, the red litmus paper changes from red to blue. So the conclusion, let me write it down. Acids, they turn blue litmus paper red, whereas alkalis, they turn red litmus paper blue. Okay, this is very important. We'll be using this and we'll be using this to tackle the following questions. Distilled water is neither acidic nor alkaline. It is neutral, as I mentioned earlier, so it does not change color for both blue or red litmus papers. So let's see. We're going to try and figure out some unknown solutions, and we're going to figure out which of them are acidic, which of them are alkaline, and which are neutral. And we're just going to use the litmus papers. Okay, let's have a look. So the experiment goes like this. Again, we have a spot plate and we'll place blue and red lit litmus papers. And one by one, we'll be adding solutions A, B. So A, B, C, D on both litmus papers. Okay, one by one, we'll be doing that. And then we'll be observing whether there are any color changes. So let's have a look. Let's have a look at solution A first. In blue litmus paper, solution A changes from blue to red. So what does this tell us? This tells us that solution A is an acid. Yes. Let's look at solution B. Solution B, in blue litmus paper, it still remains blue. That means it's not an acid, but let's look at, let's look at it below. For red litmus paper, solution B changes from blue, red to blue. This tells us that solution B is an alkali. Now let's go back to solution C. In blue litmus paper, solution C changes from blue to red. Again, this tells us that this is an acid. And finally, let's look at solution D. For blue litmus paper, it remains blue. So this is not an acid. And for red litmus paper, it also remains red, so neither is it an alkaline. So in other words, solution D is neutral. Okay, so let's go ahead and write it down. Which solution is or are acidic? So based on the table, solutions A and C are acidic. So let me write that down, A and C. Let's read question B. Which solutions is or are alkaline? So based on the table, solution B is an alkali. So let me write that down. B. And finally, which solution is or are neutral? 
So based on the table, it is solution D. So let me write that down, solution D. Okay, so just to wrap up this quick video, acids turn blue litmus paper red, and alkalis turn red litmus paper blue. All right, so hope to see you again in the next video. Bye for now.